What's up, YouTube fans? Today, we're going to take a look at the Lemon Tree Purple Potato, their version of a Masterpiece Shockwave slash the ship from the Transformers movie called The Revenge. Uh, you see that as Unicron makes that ship for Galvatron. So this is an interesting kind of one-off piece. You know, Shockwave never transformed into that ship, obviously. So it is a sort of one-off character. It's not from G1. It's not really from the movie. Although it's cool that they made the ship. Obviously, this is uh, a newer company. I haven't really looked at anything from Lemon Tree. So we'll take a look at uh, how this company did. There's a lot of accessories in this box. So let's take a look at that. First off, there's some things you need to assemble right out of the box. So firstly, the arms need a little piece that's missing right here, which is part of the ship. So go ahead and pull this down, take this out, fold the finger up, and then fold the hand upwards. And now you have that little gap there. And you're going to take one of these, and that's what's going to kind of fit in there. And then you take one of these posts and just stick that in through there. Now you're going to take this, and you can see there's a peg on this end. That peg is going to go right into the bottom there. So go ahead and get that pushed in. There we go. And then push the hand back down. And the hand basically holds it in with friction, so it doesn't fall out or anything like that. Then go ahead and put this back in, and peg that back in. And there you have his ship. Now you can push this all the way in as far as it'll go. But that's how he's supposed to look. They also give you these longer needles, I guess, for the engines. So they're supposed to go right here in these engines. You can basically just peg that in there. I guess for shipping, they take it out so it doesn't get damaged, both of those parts. So there you go, that's what it looks like with those in there. So I'll get the other two in. I just wanted to show you that is the first step you have to take when you take them out of the box. Right, and there's Purple Potato with all those little spindles and appendages. That looks actually really nice, I like those. I think it just adds to the character of this this guy. You do get a few more accessories, so you get this nice little metal spring here. It's a really high quality piece of uh, spring. It feels just as good or better than the Masterpiece. And you get this little plastic adapter. Now I can't get it back out of here. I don't want to stretch the spring out or anything. So I'm going to leave it, but you do have to plug that in there. Then you take this piece here and you plug that into the engine right there, kind of in that nozzle there. And of course you wouldn't be shockwave without his shockwave attachment here. So you take the hand off. It's just on a peg. See there's a little hole. You're going to take this, attach this here. And then you can take this spring and attach it to the little peg here on the side. And there you go. He's got the traditional shockwave weapon, which I think looks really good. You know, it wouldn't make sense without that. So I like that they included that. You also get a second one. So if you wanted both hands to be shockwave hands, you can put it on. They're exactly the same, so I'm not really sure why they included two. But they do give you two, so if you want two shockwave hands, you can. Me, personally, I like it to have just one. You... But wait, there's more. You also get... This blast effect here, translucent purple, really nice looking, one of the best blast effects I've seen on a third party figure. You just put that together like that, and that can fit right into here, into his can in there, and that looks really good. You can also use those in the vehicle mode. We'll take a look at that when we get to vehicle mode. You do get two of those, so if you did want to put that in his other arm, you could. But we'll look at that more in the vehicle mode. It just looks better. It makes more sense. So that's really it for the accessories. Now let's take a look at this guy and what he can do. So he does have a gimmick. He has a light up head. He also has light up engines, which we'll look at in the vehicle mode. So let's start with the heads. So you go ahead and open up the top of the head. You can see there's a little module in here, a LED module. You can just pop that out. I'm going to use a spudger. You can see I already put batteries in there. These are AG1 or SR251, 651, I can't remember the number. Um, I'll put it in the comments below, but you need two of those. And you basically stick that right here into his head. And then go ahead and close up that head. And this is a really cool feature. 
and we'll turn off the lights so you can see the head the LEDs. So you do get this little adapter here. It's got a magnet here on the end. The purpose of that magnet is to turn on the light. So you pass it over the head and you can see his light turns on. Pass it over again, it turns off. That's a really neat feature. I, I'm not sure why they did that. Maybe to cut down on the hardware for a switch or the electronics. You know, this is a lot simpler, but that's a really cool feature. I really like that. All right, now let's go over his articulation. Pretty well done. So the head is on a double ball peg. So there's one in the neck, one in the head. I haven't really seen a lot of that on a ma uh, masterpiece scaled figure. So it goes really high up, really far down. You really get a lot of movement on this. And obviously it rotates all around and you get a really good side to side movement. I mean, you can pretty much get any angle on this head because of that double ball joint. Do you get a rotation at the shoulder on a ratchet? It goes up to the side on this joint here. That joint is a double jointed uh, shoulder there, so you can get it kind of in all sorts of positions there. You have a rotation at the bicep, rotates all the way around. You have a double jointed elbow, gets you the full bend. You have a rotation at the wrist, and I showed you earlier that wrist can actually come off. He has firing wrist syndrome. <laughs> you do get fully articulated fingers. I don't think they're pinned, but they don't feel as flimsy or as loose as KFC hands, so I don't mind them. As long as they're not flimsy and loose, I'm okay with hands like this. Um, typically, though, I just I, I prefer pinned hand, fingers so they don't fall apart on you. But I haven't had any issues so far. You have a rotation at the waist, rotates all the way around, no problem. You have a really nice ab crunch so you can lift this up. Almost like a MP44 joint there, so you get all the way down to there. You can get really far. And then that rotates on the top of that joint, so you can get it pretty much anything. I mean, as long as you're creative with your posing, you can really get this into some crazy configurations. You have a hip skirt here on the front and the back. The leg goes up to there on a soft ratchet. I guess it's the hard ratchet. Back to there, out to the side on a ratchet as well. Rotation at the thigh up here. And a rotation at the knee. You have a single jointed knee on a ratchet. It gets you 90 degrees, almost exactly. You get an ankle tilt. It's a very tight ankle tilt when you first get it. It is on a friction joint there, so it tilts all the way to there, all the way out to there, back to here, and forward to there. And for a quick size comparison, there is Purple Potato next to the MP36 Megatron and the Takara Tomy version of Shockwave, the painted version. You can see he's bigger than the Masterpiece version of Shockwave, but he does fit in pretty nicely with the Masterpiece scale. So if you wanted to use this as a Masterpiece Shockwave in your collection, other than these engines here on the back, he's a pretty good stand-in. All right, now let's get Purple Potato transformed into his ship mode. There are some tricky bits, I'll talk about those. There's one in particular that I would recommend you actually do a little bit of repair. And I'm going to show that. I saw a couple other reviews on this and they did struggle with that part. So I did repair that here and I'll show you how to do that. Alright, so let's start off with the arms. So go ahead and rotate the arms upwards like this. We're going to do one arm and then I'll let you do the other one kind of on your own. Go ahead and open up that. Open up this arm here. Make sure you get this panel, and it kind of auto-morphs, you can see down there, as you push it down, it auto-morphs that panel back out. But just note that when you put it the other way, you do have to fold that panel in, right? So make sure that panel comes out. Straighten out the fingers and the thumb, they have to be like this, otherwise they're not going to fit. Fold it inwards, take this panel, and peg that into the bottom there. And it should look like, you know, kind of the front of the, half of front of the ship, like that. Right, so same on this other side. Now to get the arms done, we can work on the chest area. So to help us with that, we can just kind of get this backpack pulled off here and it'll get a little bit of room to do some things. Go into the arms, rotate them back like this. It'll give us some space. Go ahead and open up these panels here, out to the side. And this is the part where a little bit of trouble, so go ahead and take this, fold that down, his chest plate. You can see there's two metal bars and they're on a slider. So you're supposed to slide 
these metal bars down on that slider. Unfortunately, it's way too tight, metal on plastic, and it just doesn't go. So I put some lube in there. You can see that slid right down, up and down pretty easily. So I would recommend you take apart this chest. I'm going to show you how to do that. So go ahead and lift up here. Um, make sure you've had the backpack disconnected. Open up here. You can see there's going to be four screws. One, two, three, four. So take those four screws out that allow you to take out this entire panel up. And when you take that off, you can get in there and basically shave off a tiny little plastic and then put a little bit of lube on those sliders. And that's going to allow you to take this and slide that down much easier. If you watch any other reviews on this guy, you'll know that's a problem area for this transformation. All right. so as you transform this, make sure you get these panels up and that's going to sit inside the cavity where you just pulled that panel out. Same on this side. It does kind of automorph a little bit, but you can help it along. And you'll end up with something like this. Again, make sure you have them both slid downwards on those sliders. If you don't have them slid down, you'll have a hard time closing this. Right. Get these pushed together and you can tab them together. Interesting little feature here, there's a magnet in here. The magnet just kind of pulls them together. That's kind of cool. I like that. It doesn't quite hold it together all the way, but there are tabs that help it hold together. So get that squeezed together. You do have to squeeze these arms together right here. So give a little push right there. And now we'll work on this. So go ahead. If you need a spudger, it just makes it easier. You can fold this panel up and that should sit right there like that. Same on this side. Pull the panel up. All right, now we can close these panels up and that's going to be the front of your ship. Go ahead and come to the back here, open up this panel, fold this out, take the head, the head's going to slide into here. Actually, before we do that, I am going to grab this panel here and you can actually reuse these battery packs. If you have six batteries, you can use them two here, two here, and two here. I don't, I only have two, so I'm gonna, you can replace these in here, either one of these. So I'm gonna take that out for now. Go ahead and fold this head down. Um, I forgot to mention this. There's a little bit of articulation here on the ears. So if you wanna angle these, you can. Right. And to get that tucked away in here, it should just slide in. Then close up this panel and that tabs in. All right, now that we have this front part done, we're going to take care of the ab section here. So go ahead and take these ab sections. Those are going to rotate upwards. Take this part here and that's going to accordion down on itself and sit there. Come to the inside, fold out these panels here. Then do the same thing on this side. Fold this up, fold this panel down, and then accordion this back on itself. That's going to be becoming the side of the ship there. And those are shit, sit down, <laughs> those are shit. Those are sit down on the side of the ship here. Like that. And that's going to meet up with this. So you can get this kind of pushed down and in. You can see there's two slots here that are going to tab into those two tabs. So get those pushed in. It, first time it was a little tight. It was hard to get that in. Now it seems to sit a little better as I've been sort of manipulating that area. So go ahead and once you get that tabbed in, just get these around the sides and give it a good push. Right. Now we're going to come to the back here. So go ahead and come to the back and you're going to separate this back. As you can see, there's two parts here. And just put those to the side. It's going to give you a little bit of work, room to work here. Come to the back. You're going to accordion this up. And all the way up to here. And you can see how that's going to kind of become the back of the ship. Right now let's take care of the legs here. So go ahead and rotate this to the front. And you do have to fold this down. That's just going to sit straight like that. Come to the bottom here, you're going to unpeg this from here. And get that out of the way. 
fold that out of the way, fold this out of the way, and that's going to sit right here. And now that you have that out of the way, you're going to take this, rotate it around. You do have to make sure you end up with this ankle piece so that you can angle it into the side of the leg. So you're going to have to turn this so that you have the joint facing that way. Right? So now that we have that, just angle your foot slightly. So the rotation on the foot and then push this panel into the side. So it's going to sit on the side of the leg there. Oops. And this is on a ball joint, so if it does come off, you can just put it back on. So that's going to be the very last step, so we just got to leave that there. Okay. Go take this panel, push that downwards. All right. Now we have to get that. We're going to rotate at the knee. So you have this ends up on the outside. Go and take these panels here. Let's just make sure we have everything oriented correctly. And here we have Purple Potato all transformed up into the ship mode. And it really is quite beautiful. It does fit on the stand very nicely, very securely, um, but it shakes around a lot just because it's, you know, kind of a thin plastic. Now it's not going to break or fall or anything. It's pretty stable, but it does shake after you uh, move it around. But let's take a quick 360 so you can see. It really does look nice. There's a lot of little nice details on the engines. Got these translucent purple pieces, the darker purple pieces here. Here's the back. You've got some painted gray details inside that booster. You've got some red paint in there. More black details here. You have some mix-up of lighter and darker purples. So down here you've got some lighter purples. And kind of all throughout you've got some red accents, black accents. So kind of all over. There's different colors. It really did some good color breakup. You get some nice paint right here on the, I guess what would be the canopy, but I mean that looks really good. All in all, pretty nice detail on this figure. You do have some accessories you can use. By the way, this tail piece down here, it does kind of end up easily moving out of the way. I, I was a little worried about it at first, but it's a relatively strong piece of plastic. Now you can use some Blastivex here on this guy. But first, before we do that, let's talk about the light up effects. So if you take this part off, it's actually two pieces. It just kind of fits in there. And you have a translucent purple piece there. Then you're left with this, which you'll probably need a spudger to take that out. So go ahead and grab a spudger and just get this LED out of here. And it's going to take two AG1s or otherwise known as SR621s. So I just already put them in there. Just wanted to show how this works. So you go ahead and put this back in. It just kind of sits there. And then you go take this and place that back on. And that just press fits onto the back there. And then you can use this piece right here so there's a magnet, you can see there's a little magnet there. And you just pass that over the top. So let me turn off some lights so we can take a look at this. So you just pass that over the edge there and it ends up turning on that light. You just pass it again and it'll turn off the light. So that's pretty neat. You can also, let's get some lights off here, take this blast effect here and fit that in. And it does kind of light up that blast effect, which is kind of cool. So neat little feature on this guy. And just to demonstrate you can use both blast effects on each of the engines and you can put this back onto the stand as a storage place so you can basically put it onto the back here it is a pretty tight fit you can put it right there kind of makes a back you know leg or whatever for this and just because I know there's people who want to see the ship next to Unicron there it is next to the O1 Studio cell um, it's a little on the big side, but still, I think it looks really good together. You could have this on display, or if you have the Hasbro Unicron, you can put it with that as well. But 
Either way, it looks really nice next to uh, any unicorns. So final thoughts on Purple Potato. This is actually my second time filming the final thoughts. The reason being it did break during transformation. You saw that in my uh, earlier transformation video. So I do have that issue. Uh, it is staying together because I did kind of a little self-fix there, but it's not going to transform again until I get a part to replace that. So let's take the positives. It looks really nice in the robot mode. You got some really nice accessories. I love these blast effects. Um, I do like the little blasters and the stand is really nice and I like the little magnet effect to turn the lights on and off. All of that works really well. And even this spring just it looks nice. The Vehicle mode is also very nice. I think it's a good looking and also just a one-off type of thing. I think it's it's nice to have stuff like that when you're running out of characters to do. You get something like this and it's unique. On the negatives, there is those sliders inside the chest. They're very difficult and I did end up taking it apart and lubing those up to try to make it a little bit easier. Also, obviously, I broke that waist joint so that's kind of an issue but um, I can't tell if that's just me and my copy or if that's widespread. It doesn't seem like it's widespread because I've watched a few reviews and none, none of them have that. So I'd be just be cautious with that waist joint. Don't put in too much energy uh, into rotating that. You know, if it's feeling resistance, then you might have to go the other direction. So other than that, I do recommend it. I think it's a good figure. Uh, I don't know if, you know, you'd want something like this You're in your collection, it's kind of a one-off thing. But if you do like Shockwave, or you do like the Revenge ship, then I highly recommend it. That's really it for today. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.